Well, 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 welcome to paradise. At least that's what you think you're getting when you rent a place like this. I mean, look how swanky, right? You got this water dock here. Look at these fancy rich houses across the canal. I mean, this is living many people's dream, right? I mean, this is the place, guys. But you wouldn't believe the amount of problems that you would have when you rent a place like this and think you're gonna get a five-star experience. Because as you guys know, I told you in a previous video, it was my wife's birthday a few days ago. So we came up here to Palm Coast for a little getaway for her birthday and try to kill two birds with one stone and see how we like living in the area. We had so many different hiccups along the way and problems with Airbnb that I don't think I'll ever even book another Airbnb again. So first of all, let me tell you that this is the second house that we ended up at because the very first house that we rented we arrived to around 7 7 30 at night it was almost dark and we got to the house the whole place was turned completely upside down like some kind of party just happened in the house there was garbage everywhere all the beds were turned over and disgusting stains and all that kind of stuff you'd expect you know pee on the toilet seat you name it it was gross okay so immediately i called the owner of the airbnb and they apologized and said oh we'll get it cleaned up for you in one hour we'll send a cleaning crew of four over there and uh, you guys can come back i'm like uh no that's not going to work because nobody's gonna be able to clean this house in one hour it's just disgusting this house needed a thorough cleaning we're talking like looks like years of not really having a good cleaning it was bad. So that first night when we arrived here in Palm Coast, I had to fight with the owner on the phone about getting a refund. She promised to actually give me a refund if I wasn't satisfied with the cleaning of the house. And I said, okay, maybe I'll come back after they're done cleaning. But it was already late by the time I heard from her. It was after nine o'clock. We had already checked into a hotel. I'm like, I'm not coming back to the house. I'm just gonna find a new place to stay. I had to work the next day and shoot these videos for you guys. So I said, just give me the refund instead. Well, when it came time to get the refund, she didn't want to give a refund. Surprise, surprise. So I had to fight with Airbnb. I ended up having to make a credit card dispute and all of that. And finally, a couple days later, Airbnb luckily ruled it in my favor and gave me the money back on the first house. And that's what brought us to this house here. And that same night at the hotel, my wife was looking for a new place for us to stay. Found this one, like, okay, looks pretty good. It's on the water. You know, that's a nice upgrade over the last house and it's about the same price as that house. So let's go for it. We need a place to stay. Now, before I get into the problems of this house, I wanna show you guys the receipt, how much we paid, okay? This house costs us $2,362 for six nights here. Plus we had to pay for a hotel room the night before. So it's more like $2,600. So it was an expensive week, no doubt, okay? Well, like I said, is a special occasion. So we're trying to do something nice and have a good time. And as you can see, part of this receipt is they want $375 for the cleaning fee on this house, which you'll soon find out was not really worth paying for any of the previous guests. So right away, as we walk into the house, this is how it looked when we arrived, guys. Like there's trash here, you have an old pen, you have lint from uh, the dryer or something like that. And you can see it's just not really swept up. You have cigarette butts over here trash over there that they just left behind so no one's really taking care of this house the way that they should be and there's lizzie hi guys welcome welcome, welcome to our crib <laughs> mtv cribs edition <laughs> so just when i first walked into this area of the house right here i already smelled something weird it was a weird smell in the house that i can't explain it just kind of smelled gross guys but then you know, the first thing you see is this view, right? You want to walk out back by the pool, come on out here. Well, guess what? This handle right here was basically broken. And I'm going to get into a whole story about this later, but now it's fixed. Now it's brand new because we had to have a handyman come over and fix everything. And I'm just going to show you guys all the problems that we had with this house. Oh my God. This is crazy. Yeah. Oh my God. It's heavy. So earlier you saw I was out there on the dock and that I had kayaks out there and they're supposed to be in the garage, nicely kept and ready to use. But as you saw, they're sitting in the water 
and one of them was completely sunk. So if you want to use the kayaks, good luck. You just have to uh, go ahead and use the two-person one. You can't use the one-person one. So then they have these bikes here. So those bikes that you guys saw out there are kids' bikes, okay? They're not for adults, first of all. And of course you go and sit on the bike. The tires are flat. Luckily I brought my trusty air gun with me along on this trip and I got them ready to go. And as we finally pull out of the garage and go for the bike ride, don't even make it halfway down the street and the chain falls off the bike. So no more bike ride. And in the garage, there was a smashed Rice Krispie treat on the ground. So clearly the cleaning crew is doing their job. And to make matters even worse, to say you wanna come in here and do some laundry, well, this thing was completely disgusting. Yes. As you guys can see, there's a bunch of rust in there here. There was water inside too, actually, full of uh, softener and detergent when they're supposed to just put bleach in these parts. And then inside of this ring, I kind of like wipe everything. It was full of mold and hair and sand. And my wife's the one cleaning that instead of having the actual cleaning crew here right, doing that. white, and now it's just all stained from the machine. This house is supposed to be fully stocked with the kitchen, with the cookware, and everything you need, right? You're gonna come from home, you're in this beautiful house. I mean, look at this kitchen, guys. The kitchen looks really nice, right? Except it doesn't actually have everything you need. If you look through all these cabinets, they're all empty for the most part. Like, this is what you get, you know? Empty cabinets, and you know, this is what you get here. There's hardly anything actually here. Yeah, there are some plates and some cups and stuff that you would need, but little things that you need to prepare meals, right? Like, oh, I need a corkscrew to open my wine? It's not here. Well, I didn't bring one from home. Oh, it's okay. broken. Oh, they have one, but it's broken. Yeah, I tried to use that thing. It doesn't work. <laughs> the top part. You know, they didn't have any containers here. Like, say you cook some food and there's some leftovers. There was nothing to put I it in. Anything fall. like that. Like, there's no scissors in here to open anything. Like, when you have to open a bag or, you know, some meat that's sealed or anything like that. Nothing like that. So, you know, they have some stuff, but they don't have everything that you would really need. And stuff that you have at home that you wouldn't think twice about bringing to, especially when staying at a house this expensive. This drawer right here, this is the trash drawer. This was completely busted, guys. And as you can see, a lot of this stuff is fixed. And I'll explain that in a little bit on how it's all fixed as well. But before when we got here, that thing would not open. So we were just throwing our trash in these little mini bags. Trust me, the problems don't end there. But coming into the master bathroom, this looks like a nice big master bathroom for you to take a shower in. Except one problem. This master bathroom shower has like very low water pressure and basically no hot water. It just gets lukewarm. I took a shower in here the first night. That's it. Can't take any more showers in here. And... Um, what I decided to do instead, well, I figured, hey, there's two other bathrooms in this house. We can just use the other ones, right? <laughs> well, when you come in to use the other ones, what else do you notice? We have a brand new shower curtain here. Why do we have a brand new shower curtain? Because the old one was all full of black mold, okay? Completely disgusting. And now that I'm using this shower, the tub, is also completely clogged, not from me. Obviously, we just got here a couple days ago. So this thing fills up like a bathtub and you're basically swimming in other people's filth here that's clogging the drain because nobody bothers to unclog the drain in this place. Remember earlier I showed you that you're paying $375 for a cleaning fee, right? Well, they don't exactly do such a good job of cleaning. You see they have these nice fabric chairs here and they look good until you get close, right? Look how black they are. It is absolutely disgusting, guys. I never sat in this chair. This is just how it came, okay? You have people sitting in here, you know, wiping their hands, doing whatever, God knows what, and they're all just disgusting. You know, some of them aren't as bad like this one I've been using, but the other ones are all pretty dirty, you know, especially these big ones like this that I have my bag on you can't see right now. But the point is, no one's cleaning it but you're paying $375 to have someone clean it. So here's something really stupid as well. You see this big grand living room? It's a giant sofa here and all of this. But what do you see? This tiny little TV. It might not look that tiny in the video, but when you sit all the way back here on the couch, guys, it is tiny. You can see how tiny it is. That fireplace is almost as big as this TV. And to make matters even more dumb, you come over here back to the master bedroom and what do you get? 
You get a giant TV on the wall that no one, nobody's using, unless you're watching TV from bed. But we like to watch TV in the actual living room. So some genius thought it was a good idea to have that setup going on. We're like, okay, whatever. Who cares about all this stuff? We came here to enjoy the pool house, right? Give you outside and enjoy the pool area. And I will admit this little bar area is very nice. You know, they have cushions on these chairs, as you'll notice. But you know what they don't have cushions on? They don't have cushions on the chase lounges that are out here. Instead, you got to sit on this thing and it is hard as a rock, guys. No cushions on a chase lounge. Tell me any type of hotel or five-star resort that you've been to that has chase lounges that are hard as a rock with no cushion. I can't think of one. So there was an extra mattress laying around and my wife was like, okay, let's bring out a cushion. And here you go. Ta-da! <laughs> That's our cushion, a mattress from inside the house. It's the only way to relax by the pool. Twin size though, either you or me. <laughs> right, so it's only good enough for one person. And as you guys can see, this house comes with a pool and a hot tub. Now it does say in the listing that if you want to use the hot tub, you got to pay an extra $287 per week in order to use this hot tub. However, you already see I'm paying a fortune to use this house, right? and then they want to nickel and dime you for extra expenses like that, I feel like it's just crazy. You know, when do you go to a hotel and they say, oh, you got to pay extra to use the hot tub? You know what I mean? Stuff like that drives me crazy, guys. And here's the other thing. Outside by the pool, they have these cameras that my wife decided to cover up with aluminum foil because we have no idea if they're working or not. Because here's the thing. According to Airbnb's rules, you have to disclose when there's cameras on the property. And there's two out here, there's two in the garage, and God knows where the other ones are. And we talked to the property manager, they said, oh no, the, the cameras don't work. Those were from uh, one of the previous owners that they left it behind, so they don't work. Yeah. And it's like a huge invasion of our privacy, right? If, they, if it is working, you know, it's sitting out here watching us by the pool and whatever, and it's just not cool. Like, it's not disclosed in the listing that you're supposed to have cameras, but you see them all over the place. And just the sheer price that you see that I paid for this house, guys, like basically it was $2,600 to stay a week in Palm Coast, which is way more than I thought it was gonna be. I thought Palm Coast being a much more affordable area would be pretty inexpensive to stay here, but it was quite the opposite. And you know, that's on par with staying in a nice place up in California, you know, $10,000 a month for a really nice Airbnb will get you a place like this out there. And you would think that would be more expensive than staying in Palm Coast, but it's not. And here's the messed up part about all of this, right? You're staying in this house and before you leave, the property manager or the owner, whoever it is that you're renting from on Airbnb, they're like, oh, Write us a five-star review, okay? You, you want a five-star review, but I didn't get a five-star service, so why am I gonna give you a five-star review? And then here's where the problems start, right? If you don't give them a five-star review, it hurts them in the Airbnb algorithm, and immediately they hate you, and they're gonna give you a bad review as well as the guest, even though none of this stuff is my fault. Like, I arrived at the house, paid them full price, and this is what I get, okay? so it's reasonable to be upset. And while a lot of these things might seem like small things on the surface, if it was just one or two things wrong with the house, of course you could just forget about it and move on and enjoy your vacation. But when it's all of these things combined, guys, it becomes one huge problem. And like I said, I was gonna explain how did all this stuff get fixed? Well, I'll show you. Here's a shot of the guy fixing the door handle over here. They had to send a handyman over here to fix the door handle. He had to fix that trash drawer in the kitchen that I'm showing you. And on top of that, when he replaced this door handle, okay, the first night we go to lock this thing, it didn't lock, okay, no lock. So what did we do? We tried to put this makeshift lock set up back here so nobody could open the door, you know, like kind of jamming the door with all this random crap we could find around the house. And that barely kind of worked, you know? If somebody wanted to get in, they really could have got in. So that first night, had to sleep with no lock here. And then of course, the handyman has to come back the next day and fix all of this. And this is happening during our vacation, right? You have people coming over, they sent a plumber over to look at the shower and all of this stuff, while we're just trying to enjoy and relax 
and, and enjoy this house. And it's like, I understand the point of view. Like I do give the property manager some credit for trying to get this stuff fixed, you know, right away. Right. Instead of letting us deal with problems while we're staying here, but at the same time, it inconveniences the guests. So you don't really get to enjoy and relax and lay around the house like you would if nobody was here doing that. So what could be done differently, guys? I've been thinking about this the whole time I've been here because obviously this is just a disaster when it comes to all the problems. And yeah, you can say, well, the house is still nice, Michael. There's still a lot of other nice things about it. And yes, I agree, that is true. But all those little things add up to a lot of frustration for me if I'm paying a lot of money. If the price was half, maybe I wouldn't be as upset, okay? But what could be done to change this, right? Well, they have a property manager. They have a handyman that's here fixing all this stuff. Why can't they have a giant checklist of all these things that need to be checked on in this house once a month? Like the clog shower drain, like opening and closing all the drawers, making sure all the inventory is here. Like, you know, they should have an inventory list of all the things inside the house to make sure all that stuff is here. Like literally the handyman could come here for an eight hour day and check on every single problem with this house and make sure that everything is actually in place and working properly. And if they were to go through that checklist, just like when you get a brand new car, they go through that big checklist to make sure everything is good with the car. Once a month, they should be doing that with these properties to make sure that you are receiving the experience that you're paying for. Because if you're not, you're gonna be disgruntled. You're not gonna come back. I'm never gonna stay in this house again. If it was a good experience, maybe I would, right? So you're losing a customer forever. And on top of that, you're potentially getting a bad review, except I don't even wanna give a bad review. You know why? Because then I'm gonna get a bad review and it makes me look bad on Airbnb like I'm the troublesome guest, when in reality, you're dealing with other people's problems at these houses. So I know this video might have sounded like a lot of complaining and that's because I'm very pissed off about this, okay? And of course, there's no offer of a refund or a discount or anything like that. You're just stuck paying for this stuff, guys. I wanted to share this with you because even when you think you're gonna get a really nice place and a nice experience staying at a house on Airbnb and it just looks perfect in the pictures and everything's gonna go perfectly, it is anything but, guys. In fact, this is not the first time I've had some, a similar experience like this with Airbnb. It's just the first time I'm sharing it here in a video because you guys said you wanted it. If you're gonna be staying at an Airbnb, you better be very careful. Unfortunately, reading previous reviews is not good enough, guys. I don't know how places like this get these good reviews. Maybe people don't care. Maybe they're not as clean as my wife and I are and don't have you know, those high expectations. You also have you know, a family of 12 staying at a house like this and probably splitting the bill, whereas I'm paying the full bill for just me and her here. So it stings a lot more when you have this many problems that are compounding. So unfortunately, there's really no way to avoid this other than just not staying at an Airbnb. At least if you stay in a hotel and you're not happy with the room, they'll probably refund you on the spot and you can just leave and go to a new hotel. But of course, staying in a house like this is a different experience than staying in a hotel. And it's the only way to really get a sense of living in an area. This is something I've recommended in previous videos and I take my own advice, you know? So that's why we're here to try and see if we like the neighborhood and what it's like living in this house, guys. But all of these things that went wrong just make the whole experience awful. And I honestly can't wait until we get back home. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.